Welcome back folks, my name is Last No Meal and today we're going to be talking about Lost Ark. So these are going to be my first impressions of the game. Keep in mind, I've already played Lost Ark before because this game was initially released in 2019 by Smilegate. It was available, I mean it still is available in the South Korean market and I do believe in China. After that, after some time, you had another company from Russia buy the license for this game and it was released in the Eastern Bloc territory, so Russia, Ukraine, I believe Belarus and everything around that area you were able to actually connect to the servers and play if you are from those countries. Now Amazon is basically doing the same, they're going to buy the license from Smilegate to release this worldwide, by that I mean the rest of the Europe, America, US, I mean everywhere else where the game wasn't available so far. And we can kind of count this as a global release on that scale. Now, I had a chance to actually play or play through the close the technical test uh, beta. Um, Amazon actually sent me a key for that. But I keep in mind, I am not in any way, shape or form obligated or required to promote the game or anything like that. What I'm going to say here is completely my opinion based on playing the game before and playing this um, closed beta. So let's get into the video and also apologies for the lack of videos. I finally finished everything I was supposed to actually finish in life so I can completely focus on this channel and thank you for your patience because I wasn't uploading on a regular basis. So let's get into the video. So first things first, let's go from the beginning. Uh, once you create your character, you can choose from different classes. Now, classes are gender locked, so by that I mean if you pick a female gunslinger, she is going to have certain set of, let's say, subclasses you can choose from. If you um, go for the male version, you will have different classes for that, like uh, artillery, as it was called, like in the other version that I was playing. So you have a guy with a big um, cannon. Um, that also comes with melee characters, with mages, with summoners and all of that, you know, when it comes to the class system. So once you create your character, um, you go through like the intro to the game or like the prequel to the story itself. Uh, once you finish that, you basically start playing the game. Now, the game, this is a asymmetric RPG, but primarily it's an MMO. Now, you don't have to play this game as a regular MMO, so basically you can finish most of the stuff alone. It's like basically you're playing Diablo or Path of Exile. You have a certain map you go through, um, once you finish the first island itself, that's when basically the world unlocks and you have different continents you can visit um, via your ship. And yes, you do have a ship um, in this game you can buy. It's not like... When I say ship gameplay, I don't mean Sea of Thieves, I mean like, you know, you're sailing around in your boat and it's like real-time strategy in a sense. But obviously it's cool because besides visiting other continents, you can also visit just islands and stuff around the map. And there are some cool islands you can visit because you're gonna be on your ship and you're going to find a random island. And that random island is gonna have something cool, it's gonna have random enemies, it's gonna have a certain story um, you're gonna be able to play out through the game. Now, obviously, uh, with your character you have the account level, you have character level, so these are two um, well, experience bars you have to fulfill. Um, the first one, the character level, is basically the level of your character, and the account level is, you know, just your account level spread across all characters. By that, I mean, as you're... Uh, as you're increasing your account level, you get different buffs and bonuses when you create a different character. That means starting with more attack speed, more attack, more defense, blah blah blah, and you know, stuff like that, which you do earn by finishing quests, uh, finding Mokoko seeds, uh, finding World Tree leaves, and you know, just a bunch of stuff you can do throughout the world itself. Um, that, that are just, you know, MMO based. And there is a lot to do in this game. As I said, from the main quest, which I'm going to talk about the story, so the questing is done through that map. You finish a quest, you go somewhere else. But you can always return to the area you visited via the um, portal itself. But I believe once you leave the continent, you have to go back to the continent itself with your boat to be able to freely travel um, within that continent through fast travel. And, you know, things are obviously paid. So every time you go through that teleporter, you will pay money. Now, besides the main quest, you also have side activities, which are kind of always placed next to it, to the main activities, so you're not going to really miss them out on that on that sense. Now, when it comes to the 
story itself. The, without spoiling too much, the main story is fun because there are things which do change within that story. You encounter certain wars, certain invasions and, you know, without spoiling, but they can be really fun because the game works in a way that they give you a lot of enemies to fight. Now, you know how it goes, like, they, they give you more enemies to fight, like, number-wise, but obviously they're going to have their health very low, so... From time to time, you will have these really cool moments where you will have a lot of people attacking, like it's going to be a full frontal attack. And because the combat in this game is really fluid, and that's one of the biggest things about this game, which I'm going to talk about, it's combat. Combining that with combat can be really, really fun. And the story itself has enough twists and turns, you know, if they haven't changed anything. Now, keep in mind... I played through one version of the game, which I'm going to talk about later, and, and the story so far is pretty much the same, so I guess um, they just kept it as is and basically just localized the game. So, yeah, the story itself, you know, it's fun. Not gonna lie, it has its twists and turns, and uh, if you really follow the story, if you really read the text, um, it can be like a really cool adventure, if you ask me. Uh, I think the strongest story for me so far is on the first continent but obviously once you progress um into other continents uh things are going to change and kind of new stories are going to emerge but obviously the main story the one that you have is you know obviously finding the lost ark which is the title of the game um is going to be that story which uh, stretches throughout each continent and you kind of have to go because each continent has something for you to do about that main quest. Obviously, as I said, from besides questing, you also get your own stronghold, so basically it's like an area you can edit and build, and within that area you can basically research different things, so you're able to craft potions, you're able to craft different items and loots, and hire merchants and hire people to go out and basically get things for you, like expeditions that you send your, your sailors on and they bring you back with certain loot and goods. Now, uh, as I said, that's that only the stronghold can be a lot of things because there are so many things to build and do and explore. It's just everything you collect throughout your adventures has to go there. So that's a huge thing. Obviously, besides PvE, you have a very, very, very popular PvP in this game because people just love to fight in this game and arenas are really fun because of that combat. Now, when it comes to combat... Lost Ark is, is one of those games where combat just feels nice. It's very fluid, it's really well done. From the perspective of sound, from the perspective of just animations that your character does and how fluid it can be because obviously um, you will be using your skills in a certain sequence and you have to know exactly when to use a certain skill because if you're fighting in PvP, one skill from another person can stun lock you and you're going to just stand there and he's going to kill you. Because, as you can see in the gameplay, like, fighting enemies is really fun, it's just, you know, going into the enemy, then just, you fired, like, a perfect shot into them, and they, they, they ragged all away from you, they get destroyed, the land around you gets destroyed, so, from that standpoint, and even the sound standpoint, like, the, the sound that the bullet or the sword makes once you, it makes contact with the enemy once you start firing, is really cool like the sound is really crisp and it's 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 really tactile to the point where it just feels nice to fight enemies you know you have that certain oomph when you're when you're fighting that sense you kind of feel a weight sometimes of, of your attacks and if you you know misclick one thing you know if you're fighting in a, in a stronger dungeon it's going to cost you so uh from that standpoint it's not just you know pressing buttons and looking cool there is depth to it because every single skill that you do you can upgrade it and get you know more uh, sub skills into it or bonuses which is going to help with that skill so you can kind of combine what do you want to do and how do you want to approach your character but overall, yeah, it can be really fun to experiment with different um, abilities. As you can see here, I was playing as Gunslinger, so as a Gunslinger I have three weapons. I have the revolvers, the dual revolvers, I have shotgun, and I have a sniper rifle. 
So I can basically switch those weapons during combat. Because, for example, if I utilize all of the skills in my dual revolvers, I'm going to switch to my shotgun. If there's a lot of enemies in front of me, I'm going to take care of them like that. And then I'm going to move way back and I'm going to use like my sniper rifle to take care of enemies because if they get close to me, it can be a problem. So from that sense, it can be really fun. And the cooldown timer is actually really fast. So generally, like you're not going to be standing in one place just firing default attack because default attacks in general in this game don't do a lot of damage. So the only way to fight enemies, even like the, you know, just the most random enemy, you need to put actual skills into attacking him. And I mean like animation wise, it's like this across the board. Every single class just has amazing animations when it comes to fighting and it's just a lot of fun to do. For some people, maybe that can become tiresome after some time, but the thing is enemies change and you know, as you're progressing throughout the, the, the game, you get a lot stronger enemies, like especially like bosses, they can be they go from like, okay, bosses with a couple of attacks to like bosses which can be really deadly to fight. Um, especially if you're fighting alone, but it's, it's definitely possible to do. When it comes to graphics, this game is beautiful. Like, um, there were some arguments online, this looks like a mobile game, I don't know. Like, then mobile games just progress too far. I mean, from like graphics standpoint, it's not like uh, photorealistic graphics, but from the art style and... Just the different areas you have in this game and variety is just a huge thing in this game. Trust me when I tell you everywhere you go to a different continent, it's gonna be a different vibe. It's gonna be a different culture. It's gonna They're gonna have different technology. They're gonna be utilizing like cities in a different way. For example, the first continent is more like, oh, we're a kingdom, blah, blah, blah. And then you go to different continent where people have guns and, you know, automatic rifles where they're advanced into this uh, steampunkish society. Um, so from, from that standpoint, from like just the graphics and design standpoint, it just the way they utilize the level design and the world um, into this asymmetric RPG, it feels nice. And, you know, when it comes to frame rates, like, I, honestly, I, I had good frame rates throughout the, the game itself. I'm running this on 3070 Ti and i7-7700, so CPU itself is a little bit of a bottleneck on my PC, I know, but still, uh, the, the, the game itself was running well, although, although, it does have FPS drops from time to time. That's also something I experienced in the other versions of, of Lost Ark when I was playing before. Amazon even picked it up. So that's kind of a thing which goes across the board even before. So if you're in a big city, you're going to have your FPS drop. If you are even sometimes in just a random area, you're going to have different frame rate drops throughout the, the, the game. But nothing to the point where it actually just made me not play the game anymore. So from that standpoint, it's okay. At least it was for my configuration and my PC. But I had a friend also playing on 1070 and he had a pretty much similar experience when it came to frame rate and when it comes to graphics quality. But as I said, from the just the design standpoint, this game really, really stands out in that particular area. It can be really beautiful to look at from that asymmetric um, um, RPG standpoint. And... You know, it's a game made by South Korean studios, so obviously the, the culture of, of things and enemies and everything is going to look different. So maybe for Western audiences, you know, some some creatures in some areas are going to be like, what is this? What is going on? But, you know, it's just it, it feels nice to also experience like just the ideas of other people from across the world and, you know, their sensibility towards the world and how their imagination goes towards enemies and how it goes Towards, towards the world and the lore, and the lore is vast, <laughs> my god. The lore for this game is just insane, like the world itself is just huge. Um, like I'm showing you on the map, just one of these continents, like this just one thing, this one map is gonna take you a while to finish, especially if you're gonna be finding everything, if you're gonna be finding every single Mokoko seed, because the more you collect, obviously you get different rewards um, for doing it. Now, as I said, I touched to the story a little bit. Um, obviously, when it comes to the story, the main story, this is not a spoiler. You learn this in the first minute of the game. You just find the Lost Ark. You find the pieces of this Lost Ark. And obviously, this adventure is going to take you throughout the entire um, world. And obviously, uh, first of all, as you're going throughout those content, people are going to have their own issues. Kingdoms are going to have their own issues and problems. And on the other side, you have demons 
who also want to find this lost Ark. So there are so many factions attacking each other into this game on different layers and on different stuff. So for example, you're gonna be solving an issue of like a villager and then boom, you're gonna have demons fight you because they think they, they can do something uh, around this area. So there are many things and twists and turns which do arrive into this game, which make it you know really fun so it's not it's not too boring when it comes to the story because there is always going to be something there is always going to be something to fight and something to look at from that standpoint obviously when it comes to the store the game does have a store keep in mind the south korean version and the uh eastern european russian version that i played oh boy the store was a little bit pay to win <laughs> it's 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 no it's no secret now, Amazon took a little bit of a different route. Some of the things that were available there are not available right now. So, when it comes to that pay-to-win segment, um, or well, just the store segment on one side, you can buy mounts, you can buy pets, you can buy chests, which give you, like, it's not, not like a chest, uh, like um, a loot box, no, it's just, it, it's, it's a chest with, which gives you the armor that you want, but it's just done in a different way. So you can buy different skins uh, for your uh, character, obviously, by armor I meant that, they're not giving you, uh, you know, armor with stats. Uh, you can also buy different uh, boosters and bonuses, for example, uh, if you buy a booster, you, like some of the things, it's like a monthly, on a monthly basis, uh, you're able to just get different buffs uh, for your character, for trading, and also uh, the teleportation is free throughout the map, so if you have that, you're basically good. Um, also, they gave us, so I, I wasn't paying my money for, for things in the store, they gave us about 40,000 of these uh, in-game currencies so we can just spend on different stuff to basically test out the store. And I mean, the store works, but at the same time, you're gonna have different things in it, like for example, uh, one of the things which can be considered obviously pay to win is that in your stronghold uh, once you go into research or once you start building something, there is a way to speed things up, so for example, you send sailors on a mission, the mission is gonna be for two hours, but if you pay with crystals, obviously, which cost real money, you can, you know, speed that thing and they will be, you know, returning home immediately. So, obviously, there are elements in this game which you can use um, to speed things up with money. But when it comes to the pay-to-win, pay-to-win system, uh, right now, that's, that's not present for your character. So, you're not gonna be getting insane damage and insane stats just because you paid money on that sense. You still have to go throughout the game and you still have to do certain things. Can it be easier, though, sometimes, for example, if you buy revives for the dungeon? Because, you know, in the dungeon, you, if, if you die, you can revive in that same area if you have a certain item. Or you can basically go from the beginning. But if you obviously pay money, you can have a lot of those retries for the dungeon. So, obviously some things are gonna be easier if you pay money but uh, right now right now they're not going over the top with it we'll see what's gonna be happening once the game comes out i don't know the plans of amazon when it comes to it so yeah these were my kind of a first impressions of the game even though i played it before um we'll see how the game is gonna be when it comes out obviously from like the game standpoint like i didn't have any crashes the game is fun like this game came out in 2019 it's already a finished title they don't have to add anything else they're basically just doing localization they're changing some things you know in the game and the story but nothing uh, to the point where it completely changes what the lost ark was about and why people play it um in south korea china russia and all of that eastern block because it's it's just a lot of fun this game is a lot of fun and i do believe i don't know i think it's gonna be free to play so i mean you can at least try it out once it, it actually comes out now it's coming out in march i believe 2022 there's gonna be more of these closed betas and i do believe there is going to be an open beta so before obviously jump into the game you can go into open beta once it gets announced and you'll you'll be able to try it out but yeah like seriously like the game is good like the game is fun if you're a fan of like Asymmetric RPGs, which, you know, obviously, this is an MMO, first and foremost, um, you're gonna have a lot of fun. Um, it can be grindy sometimes, of course it is, it's, 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 uh, it's an MMO, but, you know, just going throughout the levels and just finishing stuff, that can be, that can be fast and fun, you don't have to, like, at least at the beginning, you don't have to go back a lot, you don't have to revisit old locations, so you basically just keep moving forward and forward and forward, 
and that keeps you know with the quest you finish a quest in one location it's gonna tell you go up here where you're supposed to so you don't have to go back and forth to finish certain quests so it's not a huge chore if you ask me from that standpoint but yeah that's everything what i think about this game so far i will have a full guide video for this game obviously as we get closer to the release itself and i'm going to go through every little thing that the game has so it can help new players get into it and you know we'll see what happens but yeah thank you so much for watching tell me down below in the comments what did you think about all of this and uh, obviously you know if you want to say something write it down in the comments i'm open to hear your opinions what you think about it if you played it or if you haven't played it what do you think about it so far from the gameplay and you know videos and live streams you were able to see so yeah this is Last Mill signing out, stay classy everyone, uh, check me out on Twitter and Discord, join our community there where we continue the discussion of video games and also huge thanks to my current Patreon supporters. This is again LKM signing out and stay classy everyone, bye bye.